Bitcoin is like 6x. Bitcoin is 360, uh, 388 versus S&P 66. And uh, gold's up 25%. And silver is up 3% and bonds are down 16%. Yeah. Yeah, so I, the interesting thing, of course, is no one would have thought that no one would have thought that MicroStrategy could outperform all 500 members of the S&P 500. I didn't even think that. In fact, we didn't even realize that. That snuck up on us. It did. After investing in Bitcoin for four years, Michael Saylor takes stock, looks back, and predicts the cryptocurrency's future 20-year trajectory. Since August 10, 2020, NVIDIA is up 934%. So we're, we're still uh, outperforming all of the 500 S&P. NVIDIA is the number one performer in the S&P. Bitcoin's up 387%. Microsoft, Tesla, Google, they're up all up like a hundred percent ish. Um, and, uh, we, uh, I keep track of all the, all the various asset classes since we got into this. And <clears throat> that's also very interesting. Uh, the S and P is up 66%. So Bitcoin is like six X Bitcoin is three sixty, uh, three eighty eight versus S&P 66. And uh, gold's up 25%. And silver is up 3% and bonds are down 16%. Yeah. Yeah. So I, the interesting thing, of course, is no one would have thought that, no one would have thought that MicroStrategy could outperform all 500 members of the S&P 500. I didn't even think that. In fact, we didn't even realize that. That snuck up on us. It didn't. Uh, we, our benchmark wasn't that. Our benchmark was Bitcoin, right? So we were actually just trying to keep up with Bitcoin. So I think you could have guessed that Bitcoin would actually outperform the S&P. And our initial goal was how do we get to the point where our company's market cap tracks Bitcoin's market cap? But, you know, along the way, we levered the company. And, and you know, the only way to beat Bitcoin is more Bitcoin, and, right? And so... So, and that's why every time people, people offer you, they pitch you all these business ideas, right? And they're like, well, do you want to invest in this business or that business? Or do you want to invest in this real estate? And I say, well, you know, Bitcoin's up like, you know, 46% ARR every year for the past four years. So, and, and that varies, but anyway, from 45 to 55% is the ARR for Bitcoin. So I think, Okay, so 50% is my risk-free return. So are you going to give me a proposition which is risk-free better than 50%? You know, and, like, and of course, no one's got a proposition that's risk-free better than 50%. So, so then the question is, well, how the heck are you going to be better than Bitcoin? And the answer is, the only good idea is borrow a bunch of money for 5% and buy Bitcoin with it. If you can borrow money for 0% or 1% or 5 or 10% and you're buying Bitcoin and it's returning 40 or 50%, then that's a good idea. So I think Bitcoin's a good idea. I think uh, different ways to securitize or lever Bitcoin, some are bad ideas. Like, for example, trading 20x leverage on Binance on Saturday night, that's not a good idea. <laughs> trading on FTX or you know, on the crypto exchanges with like mark to market, massive leverage is not a good idea. But, uh, you know, if you can take a 30 year mortgage at 3% interest and buy Bitcoin with it, and that's a good idea. And, you know, and, and maybe you remember you lived through the many epics. The last epic is a, about a 45 to 50% ARR. The previous ones were higher. And I think it's the law of large numbers says that as Bitcoin approaches the market cap of the S&P index or the market cap of all the equities in the world, it'll start to approach an ARR and a volatility, which is lower. I, I, I don't think it'll ever get to the performance of S&P. I think it'll always be better than the S&P index. And I think 
like right now the ratio is like 46% for Bitcoin versus 12 or 13% for the S&P. So it's like three and a half X performance and it's like two and a half vol. So the sharp ratio is higher, right? There's a higher sharp ratio of the S&P. The performance is much higher. <laughs> Bitcoin's price has reversed and is now trading 16% higher than its recent low of $52,000, $546, which was hit on September 6th. This, according to analysts, might signal the beginning of a surge to new all-time highs. Locally, Bitcoin's structure has turned bullish again this year, having closed above the prior September high and independently locking in a higher low. This setup suggests that the market is strong enough to overcome the resistance at $65,000 and later confront supplier congestion at all-time high looks right to take out $65,000 and then new all-time highs, wrote Bitcoin analyst Gell in a post on X on September 17th. He was referring to Bitcoin's recent high of $6,670 set on September 13th, which was higher than the September 3rd high of $59,800. Bitcoin 12-hour graph. The local bullish movement in source gel appears to be quite good. Responding to Gel's research, an anonymous trader named Alstein Trader stated that breaking through the $65,000 mark would pave the way for new record highs. BTC price has risen 15% from $57,000 to $900, putting it above $66,000, according to prominent crypto expert Don Crypto Trades, who also noted that Bitcoin was trading at the middle limit of a descending parallel channel at $7,923. Further information from CoinGlass shows that there is a significant amount of Ascort accumulating around this level, which further emphasizes its importance to bears. The barrier on the upward is further stiffened by the fact that the liquidation heat map above shows that approximately 4 billion 13 million in ask orders are hovering around the $60,000 level. While CryptoQuent reports that the future sentiment index has been on the rise since the beginning of the year, KYDUP shared data from CryptoQuant showing that this metric has an 89% historical correlation to price jumps across four cycles, suggesting that Bitcoin could see further growth. And I just believe over time, Bitcoin will converge toward the S&P times two and, the, and you know, 50% more volatility right. S&P and two times performance or, or if the S&P, you know, gives you 12% a year, then Bitcoin ought to be 20% a year. And so, I, so that being the case, we did this Bitcoin 24 model and the 24 model is a 21 year model. And uh, my base case is 29% ARR for the next 21 years. And at 29% ARR, you end up hitting $13 million of Bitcoin in 21 years. So that being the case, coming back to every pitch I get, okay, while well, you have a pitch, can you guarantee me 29% ARR risk-free? Or and, and another way to say it is that's the risk-free rate. So can you give me 39% with no additional capital required for the next 21 years? And if so, it's still not a good idea because it's a distraction, right? Right? It's still a distraction. I'm taking risk, but it's it's maybe an interesting idea. But of course, as soon as you set that as the cost of capital, 29% risk-free. I mean, the risk-free fiat rate right now is 5%, right? Or actually after tax. Really, the risk-free rate has got to be the after tax bond yield. So maybe it's 3%. So it's 3% if you think conventionally in fiat terms. But if you're thinking Bitcoin terms, it's 29% for me. You can have a different forecast. But it's very, it's very clarifying, right? Because as soon as you actually set that, you think, well, there's really nothing that interesting to me other than what's interesting is companies that can raise capital to buy Bitcoin. And, and intelligent leverage ideas, like raise a billion dollars for 0% interest and buy Bitcoin with it for seven years. Like those ideas are interesting to me, but there has to be Bitcoin on one side of the idea. And the other side of the idea needs to be an arbitrage of the extremely cheap fiat uh, interest rates. 
One event is poised to impact macroeconomic volatility this week. The U.S. Federal Reserve will cut interest rates for the first time since March 2020. The exact size of the cut will only be announced at the Federal Open Market Committee meeting on September 18th, but markets have already priced it in. Rate cuts may sound good in theory, but they actually signal deeper concerns, such as collapsing, borrowing spending, and investment opportunities. Financial analyst and investor Jacob King told XF followers over the weekend, that historically, sharp cuts have preceded recessions, which is why the government is scared and scrambling to reverse and overreach. The current discussions revolve around 0.25% and 0.5%, and the most recent data from the CME Group's FedWatch tool suggests that Bitcoin is more likely to climb the ladder. King singled out the global financial crisis of 2008 as the major problem, and the current warning indicators are strikingly similar to those of that year. Unemployment is on the rise, housing starts are down, home sales are declining, and the Federal Reserve Fund's rate chart looks disturbingly like 2007 from 2008. Trader Rickus is among those anticipating a bullish reaction in the price of Bitcoin, According to his X analysis, if you think that rate cuts will cause a sell-off in Bitcoin this week, you might be mistaken. If the stock market is calm, then rate cuts can actually be bullish, and they have a history of coinciding with price rises, depending on the background.